Hello and welcome to today's webinar, A Class Detection Workflow. This webinar is brought to you by Live Lab Learning, which is a subsidiary of Academic Corp, a wholly owned applied software company created to provide world-class training. I am Zach Flynn and I'm delighted to be your moderator today. Throughout our presentation, we encourage you to interact with us by typing in questions and comments using the questions pane on the right. We will be answering questions at the end of the presentation. This webinar is being recorded and will be available to you online via our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, search Live Lab Learning on Facebook and like our page to receive the latest information and special offers. When you visit our website, LiveLabLearning.com, there is a complete schedule of upcoming events. Please take note of our upcoming events. Bim and Beard Delaware, tomorrow, August 26th. Bim and Beard Texas, September 9th. And Bim and Beard Georgia, September 30th. Michael Reuter is our pre presenter for today. He is the customer success advocate for applied software. His background is as a BIM slash BDC coordinator for Walsh Construction. He also worked as a QA, QC, and project engineer. He is proficient in BIM 360, Navisworks, and setting up files for coordination in Revit and AutoCAD. A fun fact about Michael is that he moonlights as a freelance illustrator and graphic designer. With that said, please join me in welcoming today's speaker, Michael Reuter. Okay, good uh, afternoon, guys. Again, my name is Michael Reuter. Um, first thing that I'm going to do is go over an agenda for the day. Um, so, first thing that we're going to I'm going to show you how to do is to upload the CAD or Revit file into Glue. Then we're going to create a new clash report. We're going to determine whether the clashes are major, minor, or non-issues. We're going to run an existing clash report. We're going to organize our clashes by responsibility. And we're going to notify responsible team members. And we're going to use Clint, uh, Clash Pinpoint to review and isolate clashed objects in your Revit or CAD model. So without further ado, let's uh, start with Revit. Um, okay, so first thing that we're going to do in Revit is we're going to create a, a 3D, a new 3D view. So all I'm going to do is just duplicate this view, and I'm going to save it as BIM 360 dash and then whatever it is. Um, okay, so we've saved that. Now we're going to rename it and. So right here, I have selected the name BIM360-SegmentAH. And the reason that I did that is because I want it to be easy to find the view once I'm gluing it later. Um, just best practice to use to uh, name all of your files with, uh, that you're going to glue up uh, with BIM360 in the front. Next, um, I'm going to go to View, and I'm going to select visibility and graphics and all I'm doing here is I'm just going to select only the important information that I want to bring up to uh, glue. I want to make the model as clear as concise as possible so I'm taking out furniture, mass objects, uh, any mechanical equipment, parking structures, uh, plants, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm going to uh, click Apply, and then OK. OK, now the last thing that I'm going to do before we glue it is I'm going to uh, activate the uh, section box. So also in this 
file, um, I don't need this bridge right here because uh, there's actually no mechanical coordination that's going to take place on the bridge of this building. So I'm just going to select my uh, view, my viewing area, and then I'm also going to select my um, section box, and I'm going to just section it out. So the nice thing about Revit is that you can hide um, the things that you don't want in your model. So whatever you are putting in this view currently is what will be glued up to N360 glue. Um, that's a little bit different in CAD, which I will show you shortly. But anyway, right now we're going to glue. Going to select the project. And okay, so we're selecting the project. I'm going to find my um, view point that I just created, the BIM 360 view. Um, okay, so it's in 3D views. Should probably be at the bottom. Okay, there we go. So it's folded because that's what I'm currently looking at. So and it's checked also because that was that's my current viewpoint. So I'm just going to click next. You could you could upload multiple viewpoints if you wanted, but for this process, we're just going to upload one. Um, so right here, you can select the name of it. I'm just going to keep it the same so that I don't have to remember what the name of it is every time that I um, re-glue it. Um, you can save it as a uh, DWF or an NWC up to glue. You can select the folder to place the model in. I'm going to put it in my crash detection folder. and um, this, it has not been glued before, so I'm going to like glue it. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing in AutoCAD. So the important thing to remember in AutoCAD is that what you see is what you get. So if you have modeled your project, uh, you know, by the whole, by by a, just one floor, or by an entire segment, or by your whole building, then that's exactly what's going to show up when you glue it. Um, you can't crop the view, but you can, but it's it, it's a it's a much more difficult process, and you have to do it every time. Um, so what I recommend is um, breaking down your model prior to starting design in, in AutoCAD. So what you guys would need to do is meet, document, and discuss how you're going to break the model up for size optimization um, at the beginning of the job and set precedence and expectations um, for that. And basically the, uh, the, the BBC guy would have to make sure that everybody met those uh, expectations. So right here, just going to do the same thing. We're going to go and uh, glue our CAD model. Um, same thing. Uh, this, this apparently has been glued before, yesterday. Um, so we're just going to glue it. I'm going to choose to update it because it's been glued before. Now let's check, and check on our, uh, our Revit. OK, so while these are gluing, I'm going to close this for, so that we don't have to view it. All right, so all right, great. So I just got a notification that the pneumatic tube file has uploaded. So I've not gotten any notification that the um, that the Revit file has, but we'll keep going. So next thing that we want to do, we want to open glue. Uh, while I'm waiting for this to open, I'll just kind of go through uh, best practices for setting up a clash report. Um, which, again, also towards the beginning of your uh, of your project, you're going to want to set up a hierarchy of design. 
meaning uh, uh, trade X is uh, takes paramount over trade Y, trade Y takes paramount over trade Z, and so on and so forth. Um, the reason that you want to do that is um, basically it's going to simplify the clash process. It's going to prevent arguments, or, or and it's going to speed up your process because everybody's going to know just by looking at their hierarchy of design what needs to be, who needs to move at what point. Okay, so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into our models mode and we're going to check and see if the pneumatic tube model is in there and I do not see it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a model. We saved it, remember, in the clash detection folder. Now I'm going to search for it. Okay. So we are. Uh, but bear with me, please. There's some. There's a little bit of latency with the um, webinar and with glue currently. All right, great. There we go. So let's search for our models. Not in there. Okay, there we go. Right there. So let's select add model. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to double check that this model came in correctly. We want to make sure that um, the elevations and the size are all correct. So we're going to zoom in and let's search for the pneumatic tube. Okay, so right here you can see something is, is uh, going wrong with this pneumatic tube. So um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this model and I'm going to change the elevation of it. I know that this is on the second floor in this building, um, which was 36 um, foot 8 feet up into the, uh, up into the air. Um, that's what the elevation was. So what I'm assuming right here is that my pneumatic tube designer built everything at 36 uh, 8. So what I'm going to do is type in negative 36.66666. That is, that's the elevation. Okay, so let's check that. All right, so again, let's go down here, double check that, let's take a walk through a building and look for it. Um, basically, what we're looking for is uh, the teal pneumatic tube. So I, I know it's over here, so as you can see, it appears that it's right on the ground. Um, it's exactly where it should be. So we've got that taken care of. Um, so now what we need to do is uh, we're going to create a clash report. So basically what we're going to do here is we are going to uh, create a clash report between pneumatic tube and the mechanical ductwork. So I'm going to show right here you can get as granular or you can be as broad as you want. So for pneumatic tube, I'm just going to keep everything because I, I just want everything to be tested. And then rather than, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. So rather than um, uh, test against the mechanical pipe against it, I'll do that maybe in a, in a later clash. I'll just deselect all of the mechanical pipe um, layers from CAD. Then um, I will uh, also put a, a one inch tolerance because for, for this project there was actually just a one inch insulation. And then I'm going to name the clash. And so it is P2 versus ductwork. Okay, and let me talk, talk a little bit about why I put one thing on the left and on the right. Again, 
going back to our uh, hierarchy of design conversation that we had a minute ago, um, the pneumatic tube is, is not a engineered um, it's, it's not an engineered service for for this hospital. So it is the lowest man on the totem pole as far as uh, the hierarchy of design goes. Whereas ductwork is uh, higher up there. So best practice is always to put um, your lower design hierarchy on the left and the higher one on the right so that whenever the clashes show up, uh, you'll see in a minute, um, the red is what needs to move. So here we'll, we'll uh, select fine clashes. Okay, and as you can see, seven clashes came back. So let's let's take a look at them. Um, so the first thing that I like to do when I am doing my clash report is I like to take a view, an overview of where all of the clashes are. So that's what we're going to do right here. Okay. Let's get up here and look at it at our building from the north. Okay, so right now what you can see is that there are basically two, I guess, hot spots for where these flashes are. There's uh, one over here and then there's, a, there's one, another one over here. So what I like to do is I like to focus in on the major spots first. So I guess since we've got this one, We'll, we'll start with this one right here. Um, right now, I can see uh, clash number seven is what I've got selected. So um, currently, the pneumatic tube is hitting a um, is hitting the uh, exhaust air. So let's get out of the clash port and just do some um, further investigation on this. Maybe we can come up with a solution. I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the structure for this because it doesn't really need it right now. Okay, so looking at this right now, it appears without seeing the structure, of course, that this pneumatic tube could, the offset could move either further north or maybe even over here further, um, and this flash would be taken care of. Let's double check that. Uh, when we're looking at the, uh, the steel or the structure in here. Okay, so again, same thing. It appears that even if this were raised to this elevation, that this pneumatic tube could hop over here. So let's also check what the um, room number is. This is going into room treatment. Uh, team conference room 2AS17. All right. So let's, I'll write that. Let's write that down. 2AS17. Okay. So we're going to go back to our class report, and we are going to mark this up. So while I'm marking this up, let's talk about um, best practices for for markups. Um, the first thing that I like to do is just circle the, the issue. Then um, I'll, I will uh, make a comment. And so what I always do is I, I type in the, uh, the room number or location of the clash, and then I try to give direction. So my direction here is move P2 one to two foot uh, north to miss exhaust air. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of give an arrow showing which way that I want it to go. Um, I'm going to hit save. 
Now I'm going to do the same thing with, with the comment because this will show up later for our uh, Clash Pinpoint. Okay, all right. Now, what I'm also going to do here is uh, save. Uh, I'll, I'll wait. I'll hold off to notify the users until later, until I've got everything done. Uh, just, just to make it simple. Um, okay, so. Next, what I'm going to do is there's, a, as you can see, there's two um, clashes right here. There's a number two and there's number seven. So I'm going to select number two and I'm going to hit ignore because we've already taken care of that clash. So right here, what we've done is we've found a minor clash, which to me, a minor clash is something that can easily be changed uh, without any direction or help or discussion by our coordination team. A non-issue is an issue that is basically a duplicate of, of another clash. And then a major issue is, a, uh, is an issue that that's going to require some discussion during our coordination meetings. So we've got that taken care of. Okay, so now that we know our definition. So let's go and take a look at our overview again. Okay, and again, you could click on these, but I, I, I prefer doing it this way. Um, I prefer looking at everything. So again, the rest of them are over here. So now we're going to look at, at this one. Okay, so right here you can kind of see this number two is turning right there. So let's let's do it some more investigation again. Okay. Okay, so we've got our pneumatic tube coming from the north, and then it's turning and going down this corridor. And then once it turns into the corridor, as you can see, it's hitting this ductwork. And we are currently at the 2AS06B door, so let's write that down. All right. so. And looking back at our at our model, we see our clash. Okay, so right here, uh, we can see that it's that our pneumatic tube is hitting the, the this uh, gold dust, which is uh, happens to be low pressure supply, which gets one to one and a half inches of insulation on it, which this, our uh, modeler has not yet modeled. So Right now, it kind of looks like possibly this could go, this, um, the P2 could maybe move left and fit perfectly right in between these two dusts. So let's, uh, let's check that. So what I'm going to do is um, I've already measured this um, the pneumatic tube, and it's a six-inch pneumatic tube. So what I want to do is I want to measure the distance between these two dusts. Okay, so here to here. Okay, so as you can see, that showed up as eight, eight inches. So again, as I just said, um, there is about um, one inch of insulation that has not been modeled uh, by our CAD modeler here. So really, that that space goes from eight inches to five to six inches. So right here, I can I'm recognizing basically that we have a pretty significant major issue here that we need to discuss. Um, the pneumatic tube is going to have to relocate um, somewhere. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our clash report. I'm just going to select number five. And um, again, normally I'll give you another best practice. Here. Normally I like to give for major flashes, I like to give multiple um, views of them. So I'm going to give one that is looking from east to west. And then I'll also give one that is looking north, uh, in, in, and I'll create a viewpoint note in a little bit. Um, so that's the, uh, 
sure to the Arctic North first. Okay. So I'm gonna cancel that first. Let's write the the comment first because this is another best practice. So I didn't do this correctly the first time, but okay. So this is at the two AS O six B door and major clash P tube first duct. Okay. I'm going to get, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to mark it up, just like we did before. Circle it. Possibly give directions, um, and then type in and hit save. Okay, so those are our two um, clashes right there. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go into markups. Okay, so let's see. Right, as you can see, it's already created a folder for me that's called clash markups. These are our two new clashes that we did, so I'm going to go back over here and give and measure and mark this one back up again. Okay, so I'm going to the hand, so I'm going to start the thing. There we go. Okay, so we're going to save this one. All right, so let's go back to our markups. That one did not save. Okay, well, regardless. Um, so again, what I what I want to do here is you can name, you can rename your, your files. Um, so I'm just going to just for one example, I'm going to rename it the same as my comment, just to keep everything um, uniform. Okay, so we're going to put this into the clashes folder. We're also going to put this one into the clashes folder. Okay, and so basically you can see what I've got going on here. So currently I have a major issues folder and I've got a minor issues folder. Uh, so let's put the uh, P2 brick duct work 7 into the minor issues folder that I've created already. And we are going to move this into the uh, P2 subcontractors folder because that, that's not that's the responsibility of the um, you know, two subcontractor. This one, we're going to move it to major issues. And these are going to be issues that I'm going to discuss at length during our weekly coordination meeting. Okay. Great. So um, now I've got that done. Let's go back to our clash report and let's notify um, our users that these are two clashes that they need to take a look at. And then notify myself. And I'm just going to put type in um, P tube to miss 
manage at 28S17. Okay. And do the same thing right here with number six. So the reason that I'm I'm creating a viewpoint and I'm also notifying myself in the class report is because um, when I once we do class pinpoint later, we will be able like uh, the, the notifications are taken into account by who they're sent to, and those will show up in AutoCAD later on. So this one is to speed door. Okay, so we've sent all those. So next, all I'm going to show you is uh, just how to run an existing flash report. This should go pretty quickly. For this example, we're going to run the uh, Sprint Delivers Telecom. You just click on it, and it's and it's rerunning it. Okay, so right here, yeah, as you can see, um, I had ignored some previously. Uh, and then there were some that were removed as of today. So these are all the check marks are, are items that have been resolved. And then we've still got two items that I've already sent um, notifications on. So since they're still here, I actually got four. So let's let's uh, just for sake of argument, let's just send one again. Okay. Also, uh, it would show. It would also show new clashes, and as you can see, there were no new clashes, just old ones. You could also make um, additional comments um, on right here if you wanted to, uh, basically saying, "Hey, this cleans complete by by eight twenty-seven." You could do that in the comments right here, so it would be documented both in their email and on the glue site. Um, so yeah, so that's that is how you work with a, uh, an existing crash report. So the next thing that I'm going to show you uh, is the final part of our uh, workflow, which is uh, organizing uh, and viewing your clashes uh, using uh, clash pinpoint. So, okay, so we're opening up our new Mac two file that we just uh, that we just uh, did a clash report on. So all we're going to do is you just go to BIM 360 and then you select clash pinpoint. And since this was the most recent um, clash test that we've done, uh, new Mac two. Thankfully, it shows up at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to view it, and then we can see all of the clashes that we either modified or notified on. So let's let's select this first one and go view selected. Okay. So notes on it on this one say move pneumatic to one foot, two foot north to this big exhaust area. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually annotate this. This file so that I can remember later that I need to revise that. All right, so we've got that one. So now let's go and view this next one and do the same thing. All right, so revision. And boom. Okay, so now that's that was all of our clash reports. For now we're ready to go back and make these changes. Um, we are we go back to show the model, and we're done here. So that's it. Um, do we have any questions? Thank you, Michael. As of right now, we just have one question, and that is, 
are you running this from a VDI or from your laptop? Right now, I am running this off of um, a Surface 3 Pro. So um, it probably would have gone, it would have been a little bit faster had I, um, you know, if I had had a high-speed laptop or a desktop, but uh, this is what this is what I always work off of, so that's that's what I'm running off of. And okay. again, uh, just just to uh, um, to, to make a, a point, it's paramount that at the beginning of your job and as soon as you are uploading this stuff, that you are only selecting the files or the the or the the things that you need in your Revit from your Revit model to push up to glue because the smaller the file, the better glue is going to work for you. All right. Are there any, our, any other questions? Yeah. We, our second question is: Will you show Clash Point and Revit as well? Um. Right now, I do not have a. Let's see if I can do that. I have not created a, a clash endpoint in Revit. Let's see if I've got some. Um, okay, so let's look at this one. Let me see. Let's see, it. Let's see if we can find anything. Okay, great. So same same way. Um, just select um, select it and then go to view selected. Okay, of course it's a, because I, I guess I, this is from a, a different. Projects, but um, it, it works exactly the same way. I just I, I none of my models were created um, using Revit other than the architectural model, um, and because of my hierarchy of design, I don't really have any um, clashes for the architect, so um, I can't really show that off. I apologize as much as I could. All right. Next, how successful have you been in getting subcontractors to adopt this workflow? Um, well, uh, for me, it was it was pretty successful. Um, basically, what what we did was uh, I had a I had a very strong project manager, a mechanical project manager that helped me. Um, I. You know, we had we had a kickoff meeting and we explained to everybody what was required from, you know, based on the contract documents. And for this, uh, for this one, all all that we needed to coordinate was our MEP, our pneumatic tube, and our sprinkler um, with with the steel and against each other. Um, so, you know, we what I did was we made, we forced our guys to you know, follow the contract that they had agreed to. Um, and we did have one issue where there was there was one guy that was that was a struggle. Um, and so what we did was uh, we found we, we actually went out and I had a list of a couple of uh, CAD modelers. Um, and so we basically gave um, that subcontractor this guy's information and um, that subcontractor subcontracted our uh, CAD modeler, and so things work pretty seamlessly there. Um, but really, uh, the most important thing is to follow your contract. Um, if if you don't follow it, then there's no way that your subcontractors are going to follow it. Um, All right. Can glue output a PDF? Or similar tangible file that can be printed and passed out during coordination meetings. And there's a follow up to that. In, there's a follow up to that. In Navisworks, we would do comprehensive clashes all versus all. Does glue work efficient, efficiently like that, or would you recommend doing them one trade at a time? Oh, sorry, separate questions. Okay, so the first question. Um, I've never I have never tried to put a PDF in the glue, but uh, one thing that I have done is um, I have you could you could export a PDF 
from CAD and then bring that in as either a DWG or a DWF. And then um, basically, uh, let's go into blue, I'll show you. Um, that's kind of, that's uh, essentially what I did with um, my uh, core plan here. So if you, so as you can see my floor plan, that's, that's exactly what it is. So then what you would have to do is go to um, options and then select two boxes. One of when it jumps up off. Okay, you're going to want to go to advanced and then select visibility for text and lines and then your PDF that you've converted into a DWF or a DWG. It Michael, up pretty mm -hmm. there, um, to clarify, they're asking not putting a PDF into Glue, it's getting a PDF out of Glue. Oh, getting a PDF out of Glue. Okay, so as, uh, the answer to that meetings. is, is uh, no, but what what you do is what replaces that, your, your PDF report uh, are your notifications, your notification email. So um, basically, if, you know, rather than one report, you're sending them multiple reports, I suppose. And, and when you're creating your viewpoints, uh, you've just got documentation up on the cloud that everybody can view at any time. Um, so that, that's, that's how I always worked around that. And if, if you'd like, I could follow up on that. Okay. As far as Go the flu goes, it, it's, uh, I mean, you're not getting a, a, you're not sitting down and having a, a time where you're going through that coordination meeting. It's real-time access to that coordination. So the idea is when you get into those major clashes where you might have five or six instead of 100, you can sit down and, and go through your traditional coordination meeting. Um, it just is to to create some efficiencies there, so you're not you're not trying to clash uh, HVAC with structural steel. I mean, that's that's a given. Um, you're dealing with more important matters. Right. Yeah. You're, just the major stuff is what you're trying to focus on. Um, well, and what was okay? So what was the second question? Um, oh, okay. The um, second question was about like either clashing everything or or uh, breaking it down. Um, I, I always, um, I always liked breaking it down because I, for me at least, my, my project, it was, I had a ton of clashes at the beginning of, uh, as soon as we started a new floor and a new segment. I had probably 10 to 20,000 clashes at the time, uh, when you broke it down into all the trades and the steel and even in some cases, uh, like the, the uh, firewalls and architecture. So, um, I, I mean, I, for me, I would I would go crazy if, if I was just looking at twenty thousand and trying to break it down. Um, instead of what, breaking it down, made it manageable for me. Um, and all I did was just break down sprinkler to you know one trade to another. I, I kind of wish going back now that I would have broken it down further so that um, I could have better, even better followed like a hierarchy of design, like, you know, gravity plumbing takes paramount. Um, uh, the least important are the sprinkler um, branches, uh, you know, uh, things like that. Uh, so, yes, you, you could view all of them at once, but I think that that would just be just way too much information to comprehend it once. That's my opinion. And and to follow up on that as well, it, it, the goal of glue is not to replace Navisworks. It's to work in conjunction with it to, to create those efficiencies. Um, so Navisworks is always going to have the, the more powerful tools. Um, it's just going to get dumped into and out of from glue. Yeah, yes. I, and I mean, I guess also to, to the point, so you can view every single clash from the report all at once, just like you could if you were to dump all the all the um, like create a folder in Navisworks and and place all of those clashes into one folder. You could do the exact same thing, but instead of creating the folder, it's already there. So like, you know, all of the dots represent clashes. So whereas before maybe you could see all the geometry here, you can see the actual the exact clashes in it, and it just 
collect them, then it'll tell you exactly which one it is. So it, it, it's similar, but it, it's not exactly the same. Okay. And now, are you talking about granular breakout of walls, floors, and ceilings in architecture? Uh, yeah, you could do that. Um, I think that if, if you were going to break out walls, ceilings, architecture, the way that I would do it is, um, you know, I would break it out so that I had my uh, firewalls um, documented, basically. I'd break it out like that. And then I would break it out with the rest of the architecture, because the rest of the architecture, you know, you need to watch out for it, but the firewalls are especially, especially important. So um, if I was going to break down the architecture, that's how I would do it. Okay. Now, is there a way for glue and Navis to work in conjunction? Yes. Um, you could just as easily, um, which I, I, I did not show, you can basically, you, you could run your class report in Navisworks. And then, uh, let's see, let me open that up. Okay, so you can run your, um, your you could continue to, to use your, your current workflow, run your class report in Navisworks, uh, or you could organize all of your, your models in Navisworks so that, um, Basically, you've got everything organized the way that you want. You wouldn't have to worry about, um, like what I did with the pneumatic tube at the beginning of it, you wouldn't have to worry about dealing with elevational issues or lining the models up. You could do that in, Mad in uh, Navisworks. Um, and then you could glue a merged model or you could glue a, just a regular model up, uh, depending on what, it, what you wanted. I'll show you that as soon as my uh, naps if and when my naps first opens. Have to bear with me. I'm, I apologize. I have like 15 programs open, so I will. I'll, I'll try to close as much as I can. Okay. So, any other questions while I am uh, doing this? Uh, yes. In glue. Can you click on one of the square dots and have it pull up the clash information? When I do that, it tells me a number. It'd be nice if it jumped directly to the clash data. Yes, um, it does do that. I'm sorry if I. Okay, so. Okay, so right here. So this this guy right here jumped up. Whenever you select a um, clash. Um, it, right down here, okay, so right down here it, uh, it shows what, what was clashing. So right here, it's a, a fire protection lane and, and it's against the, uh, the, the cable tray. So that's just like Navisworks. And, and also from here you could, you know, from this you could do all the things that I did in this in this pane. So if you would rather, if you wanted to do it like that, then you could do that. Will it do that if you select a class from the model view, and not uh, from the tree? Yeah. Uh, no, it won't, but all you got to do is roll over it and then find it in the tree. So it'll roll over and give you a number, and then you, you select it, and it'll, and it'll go to it. Then let's see, going back to the map source. Okay, so... Same same thing. I could glue my entire file. Um, just the exact same way.
Okay, are, are there any other questions? Is there a way to mass select clashes, i.e. shift plus click? Uh, no, there is not currently, but um, we, uh, and by we I mean uh, applied software, I am actually working on, we're working on developing a, uh, a, like a, a plug-in into Glue for that right now. So that we can organize them, we can select the, we can select them, we can drag and drop just into a folder, just like in Navisworks. And then, eventually, what we're going to want to also do is um, push that uh, possibly as an RFI or as a some sort of issue in the BIM 360 field. So currently, no, you cannot do that. But I am that is something that I am specifically working on uh, currently. Great. Anything else? As of right now, that was the last question. Um, we'll see if any more float in while you're doing this. Okay, let's see. If, it's probably going to take a while for that Navisworks model to upload. Um, because it's a big file. But it, yeah, you can basically you can add everything. You could you could even just go through and, and um, upload all of your NWC files uh, in the glue uh, just like and then that would that would work seamlessly as well. All right, great. Um, if you need to see that in uh, in a further demo, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is zflynn at asti.com. That's F-L-Y-N-N. -N. Um, if there are no other questions, thank you for joining us today. We hope you found this webinar informative and helpful to your business. We look forward to you joining our next webinar on Powerful Construction Solutions, the Construction Technology Group, on Tuesday, September 15th from 1230 to 130 p.m.